New York, JFK. And I'm approaching JFK Airport from the West today. Do you know what that means? You might know, because I've filmed this before on my channel. I'll be flying on the Lendy arrival procedure to Kennedy Airport, and I'm very excited about that. Hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to be flying on a Delta Airbus A321 to JFK Airport. You're coming along with me, so let's head over and fly on the Lendy arrival. So today I'm in Salt Lake City. I love this airport. Brand new terminal, bright open spaces. It's a great place to be. But what I'm super excited about is the approach. Okay, I'm gonna make a quick trip to the Delta Sky Club before I get on my flight. I'm in the main cabin. I don't think there's gonna be much meal service on this flight, so I'm gonna eat right now. If you haven't been to Salt Lake City Airport's new terminal, make sure you make it there. And even better, if you have access to the Delta Sky Club, take advantage. The food is great, and I especially love its outdoor deck with some great views. I was even able to see the A321 that I'll be boarding soon as it pulled into the gate. All right, I'm in the outdoor deck here, the Sky Club at SLC, checking out some of the construction. I got a whole video about this terminal and what's been built here. You got to check it out if you have a chance. But first, let's leave the Sky Club and head on down to the gate area. All right, the Sky Club meal is complete. I'm now walking over to my gate. It's a very short walk to the gate today. My seat is on the left-hand side of the airplane. Generally, when I flown the Lendy arrival, that's the side that provides the best views. We'll see tonight. This plane is calling my name, so why not board? Why not? I don't know, so let's go. All right, I'm on the boarding gate bridge right now for the flight. Last time I took this flight, it was operated by a Boeing 767-400. Today, it's an A321. That 767 was luxurious as I had a seat in the Delta One cabin, but this time it's the exit row, and it's in an exit row with a door, so there's extra, extra legroom. I mean, a lot of legroom. There's so much legroom that even if I stretch my legs all the way out, they don't hit anything. This is a highly coveted seat, and it's all for me. Well, it's for you too, since you're always part of my journeys. And the view out the window is great. Although Airbus aircraft windows tend to be smaller than what I'd like, I'm satisfied with the cleanliness of the window and my wing view. Let's not delay this any further. It's time for pushback from the gate onto the wide SLC ramp. Today, we'll be departing from runway 34 right, which is located in the middle of the airport's footprint. While the terminal may be new, the airport is old and its runways remain the same. Oh, that brings up one thing I wanted to mention. People are always referring to Salt Lake City Airport as a brand new airport. It's just the terminal that's new. The airport itself is the same old airport, but it's a good airport altogether. By the way, this video was filmed in May of 2022, so there are likely some changes that have occurred on the ramp. The terminal building itself is still in the process of expansion. As we work our way to the runway under the control of ground control, we need to head west before we can head east to the runway because the eastern part of the ramp is closed for construction. The terminal is growing and the concourses are going to be even bigger than they are now. While the gates at SLC are designed for multiple carriers, Delta is the primary carrier here as this is a Delta hub. These are exciting times at SLC and it's always an exciting time when you're taxiing out to a runway at any airport because we'll be in the air soon. The taxi route was long due to the construction, but I really enjoyed the mountain views. Here's a preview of the initial departure path we'll be taking once we're airborne. We're about to taxi parallel to the runway in the opposite direction of takeoff. We're around the midway point of the runway here, so we have about 6,000 feet left to taxi before we get to the beginning of the 12,002 foot long runway. Taxiing in this direction provides a really nice view of downtown Salt Lake City just before the mountains rise to the west. We need to taxi around a construction area before we get to the beginning of the runway. Despite the long taxi, traffic was very light, so we made it to the runway quickly. Let's head over to JFK.
Our initial climb out is to the north, which is the direction that the departure runway heads in. Our route will take us to the right to head east, but that direction is not accessible now due to mountains on the right side of the aircraft, so we need to proceed straight out until reaching an altitude higher than the mountains before turning right. We'll see the mountains once we turn to the right, but for now our view is of the Great Salt Lake, the namesake of Salt Lake City. After reaching sufficient altitude, we start a turn to the right. Our flight path today is basically a straight line from Utah to New York. Shortly after takeoff, we enter the state of Wyoming and are treated to a great view of Rock Springs. American train and bank robber Butch Cassidy worked here as a butcher in the 1800s. That's followed by Rawlins, Wyoming, home of the Wyoming Frontier Prison Museum. You never know what you're going to be flying over when crossing the USA. What a gorgeous country to fly over. Here's the town of Wheatland. Wheatland boasts the first and largest private irrigation district in the USA. I tried to identify as many places on the ground as possible while it was still light out. Pretty soon, the sun is going to set and we're only going to be able to make out places from lights on the ground. Norfolk, Nebraska is one of the last daytime lit cities. While over Iowa, we had to dodge some high altitude weather systems as the sun cast its final rays of day onto the clouds. It's now dark out, and our flight is about to take us over a major metropolitan city, Chicago. Chicago is always very recognizable from up here, especially at night. I love being able to see the Chicago O'Hare International Airport. While it's tough to see the runways at night, it's easy to see the terminal buildings as the ramps are very well lit at night so that ramp personnel can see the aircraft pull into and out of the gate areas. One thing I love from up here is seeing the urban grid system of the Windy City. We'll clearly see the grid system two more times as this flight will pass over Detroit, Michigan and will descend over New York City. Flying over major cities at night can be even more interesting than flying over them during the day. I also just love the abrupt end of city lights of Chicago as we approach Lake Michigan. We're getting closer to New York City, and the next major city that we're overflying is Detroit, Michigan. Like Chicago, it's really easy to identify at night, and again, I love finding the city's airport. This is the Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport, and the lights illuminating the ramp area make it easy to identify. Shortly after we pass over the airport, we fly over the Detroit River, which separates Detroit from Canada. We'll be flying in Canadian airspace for a short time before we re-enter the USA. All right. It's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, the Lendy Arrival. The Lendy Arrival is the arrival route that aircraft approaching JFK take from the west. Lendy is an airspace fix over Elmwood Park, New Jersey, and it's the last fix on the arrival route before flying over LaGuardia. We'll be flying directly over LaGuardia Airport at a high altitude, and then we'll descend over Long Island and the Atlantic Ocean in a series of right turns to runway 4 right. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to include the full ATC audio of our flight talking with New York Approach Control. I'll also let you listen into all transmissions on the frequency. The controller is handling all arrivals and departures to and from Kennedy. I'll increase the volume for transmissions with our flight, Delta 380, and I'll also provide commentary. Approach Kennedy, Delta 380, 
checking in one nine uh no uh nineteen and a half for one I know with Tango. So the B and E is first and LaGuardia flight heading one five two next to the ILS four right. After LaGuardia heading one five zero, any chance of uh, four left to help the screen? But the three eighty uh if you have a piece of that of parts. Play the right uh the right side canal and get a little parts to do it. Alright, thanks, go to the Watch Jeff Blue Our pilot really wants to land on runway 4 left. It's closer to the terminal, but runway 4 right is the active runway. We're told to fly a heading of 150 degrees after flying over LaGuardia. Let's listen in a bit to the frequency. We're leaving 3,500, we're flying over northern New Jersey and looking at Rockland County in New York State. Heading 100. The busy controller, who's working both arrivals and departures tonight, is about to give us an instruction. We're told to descend to 13,000 feet. Departures from LaGuardia headed to the south are restricted in their climb to 12,000 feet, leading to 1,000 feet of separation. All we have to do for now is descend to 13,000 feet and fly towards LaGuardia. We're looking at the Hudson River, and towards the top of the screen, you can see the Tappan Zee Bridge connecting Tarrytown, New York, with Nyack, New York. We're approaching the northernmost borough of New York City, the Bronx, and just above the Bronx is Westchester County. Alright, zero four zero heading twenty eighty five. We'll see you, Jeff. We're forty six. Twenty eighty five and off to Robbinsville UPS eleven eleven. Because we'll be landing on runway 4 right today with a right turn onto the final approach course, we're crossing Manhattan over Harlem, so the majority of these skyscraper view is on the other side of the plane tonight. Jeffrey I love this view of the Bronx. The dark area in the middle of all the lights is Bronx Park, home to the Bronx Zoo and the New York Botanical Garden. ATC is silent for the moment, which is why you don't hear any chatter on the radio now. Once over LaGuardia Airport, we turn right to 150 degrees, as instructed when we checked in. As we look at the Long Island Sound, let's listen to the controller work flights into and out of JFK. We're over Queens, looking east, and are told to descend to 8,000 feet now. I hope you enjoy being able to listen into the controller talk to all pilots in the area. He's busy vectoring aircraft onto the final approach course, as well as bringing departures towards their initial departure fixes. You're looking at the lights of Nassau County. Do you remember our pilot's request to land on runway 4 left tonight? Not going to happen. That's fine. Thanks for looking into it. 
The controller is just too busy vectoring aircraft to runway 4 right tonight, and runway 4 left is actually a busy departure runway this evening, so we'll just follow all of the other aircraft to the runway this evening. New York, hello, Singapore 23 Heavy, passing uh, 1,900. Singapore 23 Heavy, New York, New York, contact, how to maintain 11,000. Climb and maintain 11,000, Singapore 23. Jeffrey 2023, Peter and Rob, still fighting against you. Alright, we'll go to Roseville, Jeffrey 2023. Jeffrey 2023, how to maintain 9,000, and contact the parts of 120.85. 9,000, 2085, Robinsville, Jeffrey 2023. FedEx 1292, the right heading Right turn 220, FedEx 1292. We're now on the south shore of Long Island. Wasn't that quick? We're told to turn right to 180 degrees, which will take us over the Atlantic Ocean. Delta 380, turn right heading 180. Uh, 180 heading, Delta 380. Direct Betty, Singapore 23 Heavy. Direct Robinsville, Fond McTain, 9000. Direct Robinsville, Fond McTain, 9000, FedEx 1292. It's time for a lower altitude. Direct Robinsville, Fond McTain, 1292. New York Crash, 1612 Heavy, 3,000, 5,000, heading 100. 1612 Heavy, New York Crash, turn right heading 190, climb and maintain 9,000. Climb and head, turn right, right heading 190, climb and maintain 9,000, Crash, 1612 Heavy. Singapore 23 Heavy, request high speed climb. 423 Heavy, speed and speed and speed. Singapore 23 Heavy. If you've been listening to other flights on the frequency, you've been hearing Singapore 23. That's the world's longest flight between JFK and Singapore at 9,537 miles. Now it's time for a turn in the opposite direction that we'll be landing in, 220 degrees. 220 heading, Delta 3. 16, FedEx, 16, 12, FedEx, heavy. Contact departure, 120.85, direct Robinsville. FedEx 1625 Heavy, direct Robinsville, contact departure, 120.85. Direct Robinsville, 120.85, FedEx 1625 Heavy. You're looking at darkness now, but if it were daylight, you would see the Atlantic Ocean below us, and at some point, it's horizon where it meets the sky. We're just south of New York looking east. ATC uses this airspace to descend us further now that we're clear of all airports. There's less traffic out here, so the ocean airspace is a perfect place for us to descend with less interference from other traffic. Sorry for the focus issues. It's hard to film at night, especially with the black canvas behind the wing. But if you can't focus on the view, I invite you to focus on the subscribe button below. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be alerted as to when I post my next video. My channel provides a very unique perspective on aviation from the point of view of a passenger, but with detailed content as if you were in the cockpit. Oh, and don't forget to like this video too. We're about to turn right soon to land. One six zero, Jet Blue seven four five. It's time to turn the base leg. 
We're turning right to a heading of 340 degrees after flying a heading of 220 degrees for a while. That's a really wide turn. Once we complete the turn on the left hand side of the aircraft, we will see the Jersey Shore. 150 on the heading and 12000, JetBlue 2103. Contact Kennedy Tower, and we're out of point one. Archery base 152 is with you in the right turn, 100. Base 152, heavy discharge, we're going to contact, combination 900,000, we're going to hit 180. Right, 180, you're up to 900,000, Apex, uh, 152, heavy, thanks. 57, 45, T-Bag, now it's time for the approach controller to issue us a right-hand turn to intercept the final approach course and be clear for the approach so that we can land on runway 4 right. Twenty three, Jeff Lewis, Hudson, Park, right? Tonight, ABS 122, Heaven, TBS, Robbinsville, contact departure 12085. 12085, direct Robbinsville, ABEX 122, ABEX. The 20-degree heading assigned by the controller will allow us to intercept the runway 4 right localizer, which is on a 44-degree heading. Once we get to the localizer, we'll turn to the right on our own. Our view is the northernmost end of the Jersey Shore and Sandy Hook. We'll be back in Queens in a few moments once we're lined up with the runway for landing. New York, good evening, 1, Let's get the handoff to Kennedy Tower now. I hope you enjoyed listening into every transmission on the approach control frequency. We basically made a giant right hand turn as the controller sequenced us in between other flights, as well as ensuring that we were separated from the departures that he was also handling. Flying to JFK can be complex, especially when you're coming in from the west like this flight. Even though most of our flight was in a straight line, we could not fly straight into JFK because of the presence of other New York area airports. We're now about to contact the control tower at JFK Airport. Let's check in with Kennedy Tower. Kennedy Tower, Delta 380, ILS, 4 right. Delta 380, Kennedy, number 2, and 160 at 18, that thing's 26. Wind shear, plus or minus 10 knots all the way, runway 4 right, split island. Clear to land, 4 right, Delta 3. We're clear to land on runway 4 right with one aircraft in front of us. The tower also reported wind shear on the approach tonight. We're under the control zone of the tower, which extends out over the Atlantic Ocean. In a few moments, we'll be over Queens. We'll first fly over the barrier island of the Rockaways, which protects Jamaica Bay. Once past the Rockaways, we'll be flying over Jamaica Bay. Like the ocean, it's tough to see the water at night, so the bay will appear dark. Manhattan will be visible in the distance on the horizon as we fly to the northeast to land on runway 4 right. We're approaching the point where we're about to intercept the localizer to join the straightened approach to runway 4 right. That means that we'll turn to the right on our own. For the rest of this video, I'm going to let you listen into some music because this was an intense video with a lot of talking. Enjoy the landing to runway 4 right at JFK. I'll be back when we land.
As we slow down, we're instructed to clear the runway, and due to the lack of departures off of the parallel runway, runway 4 left, we're told to cross 4 left. Delta 380, taxi via Foxtrot, cross runway 4 left, and then taxi left Alpha, so we can out. Look out, Fox, we'll cross 4 left, left Alpha, stay with you for now, Delta 3. now here at JFK. I am now in Terminal 4 here at Kennedy Airport. Bravo 20 was my arrival gate tonight. It's not that often that I get a gate that is right at the beginning of the terminal. What a great flight that was. I'm so glad I was able to share my experience with you. So, you know, if you watch my channel a lot, you know that I actually have taken this exact flight before from Salt Lake City to JFK, but I try to make each experience different, show different things and point different things out. And this was a different experience than last time. Well, thank you so much for watching my video. If you're not already subscribed, I invite you to click on the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on my next video. My aviation videos showcase a hidden side of aviation designed for the passenger to help improve your experience. See you soon.